So a lot of people ask me, they, they're like, how did you get through that? How did you survive that? How did you, you know, not give up? <laughs> I'm like, I, sometimes I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I just had to, like, not die. Because uh, my other choice, besides not healing from complex PTSD, is death. And, nah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna defiantly live and, you know, try to make my life better at every turn. Because, honestly, that's how I was raised and that's how I choose to live my life to improve it and to make it better and make my environment better. And then, you know, as things get better and branch out, I can make other things better and encourage other people to make their shit better and we can all have better shit. So in 2014, I kind of came out to the world that I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. And... um I just want to th say thank you to all those people that reached out and like there was like a literally like, <laughs> it was one of the most amazing times in my entire life and I I made these videos and I put them online and th before that like there was like I was like I had trolls and like people were like you know always like trying to tell me how to live and who to be and projecting their shit onto me and you know, blaming me for whatever fucked up shit was in their life that they couldn't get laid about or whatever. And <laughs> so there was like a seven to ten day period, and I don't remember how long it was. It was like, it was seven to ten days. It was a good week. It was a long time. That's a long time if you're like suffering. A week is a long time. <laughs> and everybody was very, everyone that got in touch with me, that, that contacted me or anything was positive and, and loving and understanding and accepting and all those things that I thought wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I was, like, so tired of lying. I was so tired of pretending I was okay. I was so tired of, like, believing that maybe all these other things were wrong with me when really I just needed to heal from this thing that happened to me when I was a child. And it sucked. And it happened repeatedly. And so I was a young adult and had other shit happen. And I had, was bullied in school. And there was all kinds of traumas and stuff that I'm uncovering that I had forgotten for years and years, I buried it. And I kept trying to go. And eventually, at 34, I couldn't go anymore. I had no more. I, like, it was gone. I was gone. I, like, completely got lost. Because I was in so much pain. Trying to keep up this, like, image that I was okay so that people would want to book me for things or want to call me on my pay lines and all this kinds of stuff. And <laughs> I just, I was just like, I can't. I had no energy anymore. It was like I had been picked almost to death. And I was laying there and, and I was going to turn into a zombie and become the abyss and hurt myself. And I, you know, and all that. And then, and then, I don't know, I just, things, other things happened during that time. You know, um, Robin Williams committed suicide. That was like a big wake-up call. Robin Williams is my TV dad. <laughs> He's one of the guys that I looked at and I said, you know, because my dad died when I was a year and a half. And I never really knew him. But I can't really remember him. I can't remember him. I was a baby. So, um, <laughs> so I always looked at Robin Williams as like, he could be my TV dad. He could be my dad. Like I, he could, like I looked up to other people in my life as a father figure, my older brother, my grandfather, like other people. But like, there was always like, like the TV thing, you know? And, uh, when he committed suicide, I was in, like, planning stages of taking my own life. I was trying to figure out how to do it without impacting, <laughs> 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 
as many people like my family. Like I was trying to like figure out a way to minimize the impact that my death would have on my family and people who cared about me. And I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I was in my mind like this like little Rubik's cube, just like trying to figure out all these things. Like what could I do to like not suffer anymore? <laughs> And, you know, the one thing I didn't want to do was face it. And I didn't want to think about it. It's kind of like, it's like, it's like this, it's fire in me. It's like fire. And I get close to it and it burns and it hurts. And the closer I get to it, the more it hurts. <clears throat> and, <laughs> and so like to heal though, I have to go in there and I have to explore this fire and I have to put my hands in it and I have to put my head in there. And I have to, like, sometimes I have to get my whole body in there and just roll around in it. And it hurts really bad. And I don't know how else to describe it other than it's, like, burning. It feels like it burns. When I'm healing and when I've done a lot of work and when I've got in touch with this, like, younger parts of myself and all that kind of stuff, it, it burns. It, like, it hurts my head. It's, like, hot. There's heat from this like massive stress headache that goes around my head in like this big band and it's hot <laughs> and I don't even, I mean I, I just you know I realized that if I died my family would have to live with that because here we all were as fans of Robin Williams, living with what he went through and, and died. And that, that was painful. And then I was like, okay, well, this is someone who's on TV. I don't know him personally. He's not a personal friend of mine. I've never met him in person, that kind of thing. Not a family member. And then I thought to myself, what if, my fam what if one of my family members felt hopeless? And then they died. And I was like, I can't do that to them. <laughs> I'm like, I need to do things to change my life like right now. And I was like panicked and I was upset. And I did. I made changes. And it took a little while. I like, moved twice so far. <laughs> it's in the last four years. I like did things that I needed to do. I got therapy. I found community online. I, you know, I got rid of most of the toxic people in my life. I don't always make good decisions. There are some people that are still in my life that should not be there. But I just can't. I can't always make the right decision. I have to make mistakes too and learn from it. So, <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not a good idea to light that cigarette. It's not a good idea to have that shot of vodka. You know, just different things. <laughs> but sometimes in your mind, you know, you know, a lot of times you know when you're faced with these choices, whether to make the healthy choice or to like do some maladaptive coping that kind of somehow feels a certain way. <laughs> I think I convinced myself that these negative coping mechanisms actually felt good. I remember like when I was a smoker. And when I was a teenager, and I was like 15 or something, and I'm smoking the cigarette, and it hurts to like inhale really hard or whatever to like get that burning feeling. And I remember like doing it and then going, what if I could convince myself that this feels good? And then I began to like that feeling. <laughs> By the way, I'm a masochist, apparently. Um... <laughs> But yeah, I, I, you know, I think some of these things that actually don't feel good, like we've been kind of brainwashed to say like, oh yeah, that feels good, but it really doesn't. It doesn't feel good. It's like ridiculous. Anyway, so I chose to live and in the same year that I choose, not in the same year, but in like the same time frame, the same year that I decide that's like when, I think that's when Donald Trump decided to become president and then the next two years I watched all this stuff happen and then I'm here I'm sitting here and I chose to live and I'm kind of bitter about it 
I'm a little bitter. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I chose to live and this fucking shit happens. They elect the rapist fucking piece of shit. They elect him. I'm here for this. My fucking God. I'm like, I just, it's, it, it just, it still blows my fucking mind to this day. It just blows my mind. I like wake up every day and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I turn on the TV to look at the news and it's like I'm looking at the murder box. Look at my phone, murder box. Look at the computer screen, murder box. We got children in cages. They're like, people are dying. It's just, like, people are just, there's, and there's those things where they have the documentaries, and they're like, here's 1,200 untested rape kits in the city, and then we tested them, and then there's, like, this many serial rapists within a certain mile radius, and you're like, no shit, motherfucker. Do you know I knew this stuff when I was 10? Because that's, like, when this, like, thing broke out of my head and, like, invaded my life, and... <laughs> <laughs> All the little cracks that I had, you know, I finally cracked open when I was 10 years old. And, like, there was all this shit that had happened that I didn't even know. My mom didn't know. Like, nobody fucking knew. And I was like, shit, did it even happen? And it did. <laughs> and the cops told me, because I didn't rem It's not like you know what age you are when you remember stuff like that. It's not like what you're thinking about. <laughs> you're not going, hmm, I wonder how old I was. And I wondered that, no, you're going like, fuck, that is some scary shit. And ow, motherfucker, what is that? That fucking hurts. And I'm terrified. You ain't thinking about numbers or how, like, anything. The only thing, you're not even thinking because you're like, all of a sudden, you're like, bam, adrenaline, fight or flight, motherfucker. We need to get the fuck out of here or just like fade away and disassociate because that's all we got. Because we're going to die. <laughs> And you know what? I remember dying. I remember dying. I remember like being, having my air obstructed, passing out. And then somehow like I woke up, but I left my body. I remember. I have actually have dreams of that constantly where I leave my body and go live in other people's like bodies while I'm dreaming. And it feels so right and true that I would be a spirit that would just hop around and, like, exist. It feels like my real world is fake. Like, it's not authentic. This doesn't feel real to me. This feels stupid. <laughs> like, if it's a simulation, I'm done. Let me out. It's like bullshit. <laughs> So yeah, I decided to live, and over the last four years, I've been working really hard, pretty much full-time, because I couldn't work anyway, so what can I do? <sighs> working full-time on researching, and trying to take care of myself, and working the little bit that I can, because man, it is really hard to concentrate when your brain's on fire. When you're dealing with trauma... You can't focus on things. It's like you can only do so much at a time. I know everybody thinks they're multitasking. They think they're all slick and everything. They're like, I'm going to do this and chew gum and walk around and do it and pat my belly and rub my head or whatever the fuck. And I'm going to do all that. But no, <laughs> you're not really doing that. But you know what? If you're a survivor and you have like complex PTSD, you're already, like, multitasking, like, all this shit in your head all the time. Like, you're not just some person walking around. You're walking around, you got all this stuff in your head just, like, churning around in there and, like, pictures and smells and this and that and that's coming up and what is this? It is really not an easy life. It is really difficult to be scared like that all the time and never to feel safe and feel like you have to be... <laughs> aggressive so that people will just fuck off and leave you alone and not talk to you because you don't want anybody to be close to you so you push them away 
You keep them away. Keep them at arm's length. <laughs> I'm not scared of snakes. I'm not scared of spiders. I'm scared of humans. We're terrifying motherfuckers, I swear. I really get to my accent back when I get, like, really into it, you know? I get, like, all in my feels about it, and then my accent comes back. And then I drop that whole, like, trying to blend in thing. And then I just start being myself. <laughs> so I'm going off on tangents, and I hope that's okay, because I'm just talking, and I'm just letting it out, because I don't know what else to do at this point. <laughs> I got in touch with parts of me, and I feel like I've stuck my brain in an oven. And now it feels like it's on a vice, but the vice has been heated in an oven that made it red, and now it's, like, crushing my head. So I just feel like I have this, like, I'm getting crushed, and I it's like something's got to come out of me, or it's going to be my guts. So I'm, like, verbally spilling my guts instead. <sighs> Sorry if that was gross. I know I speak kind of visually every once in a while. I can get kind of graphic. I I was an adult entertainer for like 15 years, and there's a lot in there. And I also did BDSM, so woohoo! <laughs> there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of creativity and imagery in my head. And sometimes I'm gross. <laughs> so how did I do it? How did I? How do I? How did I choose? Well, you just got to hang on. You just got to hang on like one more day. And then it gets easier and you're like one more week. And then sometimes it's one more hour. And then you'll find yourself going, it's one more second. I used to live like that a lot. Just to get through this next moment. Let's get through this next five minutes. So I used to love wearing a watch. It's like, let's get this next... 10, 15, 20 minutes in the second, next hour, next half hour. That's how I got through my life. I was sitting in class. We're taking the test. Everybody's done, or everybody's still, like, taking the test. I'm sitting there. A lot of times they wouldn't let me bring a book with me because they're fucking stupid. Like, I'm going to fucking put the answers in the in the, the novel I'm reading. <laughs> and I'm like... All right, looking at the clock, five more minutes. I can get through five more minutes. It's like, no, I can't. I can't. I can't do this. I can't do it for five more minutes. I'm like, all right, let's do it for three minutes. I'm like, okay, we can do three minutes. So three minutes go by, and I'm like, all right, let's do five minutes. I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't even take one more minute. I'm like, fine, we can do a second, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, let's watch. And it goes tick, tick, and I would watch, and I would just, you know, <laughs> I've learned this about myself that I can't calm down very easily. I'm actually very, very high strung. And a lot of people, like, they meet me in person. They think I'm kind of mellow. It's totally an act. On the inside, I'm going, holy fucking shit. I can't believe I'm even out of my house right now. Because there's people and stuff. And I'm wigged out. Like, my skin is crawling. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, I see, I can't calm down. So where was I going with that? Oh, that I, I found out there's a reason that I can't calm down. It's because I'm like wigged out all the time. And like, I've tried to do like yoga, like meditation and stuff like that. And it was always like really freaked me out because sitting quietly and not doing anything and not having any form of expression and just like, <sighs> Blending in with the crowd, not doing anything, not being an individual, just like being there. But like it bothered me for those reasons. And like sitting quietly and not being expressive was, I think, triggering because I wasn't allowed to express myself about things that happened to me. As far as like I had locked all those things away inside me. Like I wasn't allowed to express myself. Because I felt if I did, that my family would get hurt. So that's why I locked it away. <laughs> and then I forgot. After, after like, I think I was like seven or eight and we had moved. And my mom had divorced the guy who had hurt me. And we were, we moved. 
and that was it. Like that person was gone out of my life. <laughs> so I was a little kid and, you know, kids do kind of live in the moment, don't they? They're just kind of like enjoying their, their little lives and it's awesome to just watch them because they're not up on their head like we are, <laughs> you know, <laughs> except when I was a kid, I was up in my head, unfortunately, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Yeah, yoga, meditation, things where I had to sit quietly would trigger me. It would make me upset because then I would get really hypervigilant. I could hear people breathe. I could hear, like, things move, fabric across skin. Like, I could hear everything. Everything seemed really fucking loud. And then, and then the person doing the instruction, like, I would, like... <laughs> I would get uncomfortable because I would start microanalyzing every expression, every tone of her voice, every, or his voice, or, or whatever it was, and, like, I could tell, like, when they got, like, I could tell, like, when their voice would waver, when they got kind of bored, or, like, maybe they've said this one thing a bunch of times, and they're thinking about groceries while they're reciting the spiel <laughs> about safety, or about, you know, whatever it was, you know, it's not, I'm not trying to pick on yoga instructors, y'all are great, but, you know, I would just like focus in and I would get too focused or I would like someone would make me uncomfortable and the only thing I could do was watch that person. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be there for anybody else but me and I'm sitting there and like somebody makes me uncomfortable for some reason and, and it has it's not like a anything it's just something will be weird and off and I'll be like I gotta keep an eye on that person and then my brain just focuses and I can't stop. And so the whole time I'm like, I can't take my eyes off this person. So I'm supposed to be doing these yoga poses and I'm like all creeped out trying to like not die. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine, we're sitting in my living room and he had traveled in with, with his wife and, and he was like giving me a hand massage or something in the, in the living room or showing me something with my hand. And he's like, relax. And, I, and he's like kind of shaking my hand like, come on, it's okay, relax, you know. And I'm like, this is, I felt pretty relaxed actually. I was like, I don't know what the hell he was talking about. And, <laughs> and I realized my level of relaxation around people as relaxed as I can get is still pretty wound the fuck up. <laughs> I'm still wired wired so yeah so recently I got in touch with all my not I don't think all of them I don't even really know but like all my parts all my younger selves that live inside me that had been abused and like you know the personas that I had created to like deal with all these different things and uh it was basically I stuck my head in the fire yeah <laughs> Apparently, I'm a very all or nothing type of person. And if I'm going to do something, I'm 110% stick my head in the oven kind of girl. And that's just me. <laughs> and I don't know how to like scale it back, you know? Uh, I'm very much like I'll dip my toe in the water. And if it feels all right to that toe and it didn't fall off, I'm jumping in. <laughs> Now, if you do actually get me into a pool and it is cold and like I have to get in for some reason, I've convinced myself that I have to get in this cold ass water. I don't know why I do it to myself, but for some reason I convince myself I'm supposed to be in the water to be involved with the other people that brought me to the pool. I can't just sit there and get a tan. No, I'm like, no, I gotta get in the water. It takes me half an hour to get in the water. Because <laughs> I hate cold water. just hate it. Just really hate it. I like drinking cold water, but, like, I hate, like, if I had to get in cold water. So, I don't know what that's about. Probably some kind of random ass thing that happened to me. <laughs> I don't even want to know at this point. I don't even want to know what some of these things are sometimes. Because I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, okay, so I don't like cold water. I don't need to have the memory of some kind of fucking fucked up shit that happened to me with cold water. And there has been fucked up shit with me with cold water. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have to go to that memory today since I have been blabbing around for like 24 almost 25 minutes now like if this was a podcast I am a directionless fool <laughs>
<laughs> I know I'm not ready. I am not ready to do the things that I feel the pull in my heart, in my soul, in the fabric of who I am. The stardust is twinkling, people. The stardust is twinkling. It wants to help the world. But I am not ready. I am not there. I just, I want to. I just want to help alleviate some people that are in pain because goddamn I'm in pain I'm like you know what there's people like me out there and they're suffering really bad and that really makes me fucking sad I would rather it just be me that really sucks I literally have <laughs> I have more respect for strangers than I do myself I have a it's really annoying too I have a basic fuzzy love and respect for everybody until you prove me otherwise, I have this basic respect for you as a person. You are enough. Right now, don't have to do anything else from here on out. Right now, as you sit, listening to this, you are enough and I have some love for you. Seriously. <laughs> I know. Some of you are going, that's really disgusting. I get it. <laughs> and it is. But I'm a Leo and the sun is my sign and I can't help it. I sometimes am the motherfucking sunshine, and I gotta share it. <laughs> I think I finally wore myself out blabbing on this recording thing. 26 minutes later, finally feeling some kind of relief, trying not to, like, you know, call people that I love and care about and, like, do this to them, where I'm, like, spilling my guts like this. <laughs> Because it's a lot. It's a lot, you know. And everyone is dealing with their shit too. And uh, this is me not reaching out for help. This is me trying to deal with it on my own by recording this blabbering on thing. For 27 minutes now. 27 minutes of me going through... Whatever it is I had to have, that's what was on my mind. That's it. I mean, I had, like, no direction with it. I was like, I'm just going to record some stuff and say how I feel. And, you know, people have asked me, how did you get through that? And the truth is, I don't know. My brain did that for me. I am blessed with a humanoid brain that has decided that, you know, it can do things to help me not die. And in those moments, maybe because my brain saved me from remembering, it benefited me. The brain does things when it does it. <laughs> and you get what you get to process. It just comes forth and then you just got to process it. That's how my trauma works. And so I've been creating safety, like physical safety. You know, doors are locked, alarm system. Weapons strategically placed. Dogs. You know. <laughs> Just different things that uh, help me feel physically safe. As far as like, you know, if someone breaks in, like, I would know it. <laughs> and they would die. Um, little things like that. And, uh, you know, and then there's like emotional safety with myself. Oh, no, wait. Before that, let me talk about, let me talk about the boundary thing first with other people. I'm still figuring out like who I am and what I actually want because I kind of lived to what people wanted me to because that was like easy and I now realize it's a fucking cop out. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not saying any of you out there that have done things that I have done similarly. This is me talking about myself. I, I was like, Sarah, this is a cop out. We can't just be living how other people want us to live. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, I can't do that. I mean, I, I can't do that to myself. Because I want to be me. I'm pretty cool and interesting and fun. I'm finding out. I'm like, I got some artistic talent and uh, I have patience I never knew I had. <laughs> I can actually be a very, very loving and nurturing person to myself. And even though that was discouraged in other personal relationships that I had uh, in my life, I'm not going to prevent myself from giving myself the love that I have for other people. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I'm going to love myself. And I'm going to be fucking proud of myself. And I'm a Leo and I'm going to roar about it. And everybody doesn't like it. They can fuck off. And that's how I feel about it. You're either in my tribe and we're all here and we're all loving each other. Or get the fuck down the goddamn road. Because 
I ain't in it. I'm not here for people that are interested in being shitty to me. I'm done with that. I tolerated that for so long as an adult entertainer. But man, <laughs> some of y'all, I wanted to hunt you down and kill you myself. I was like, oh, really? You want to do this to me? And I'd be like breaking in and be like, guess what? I'm in here with you. You know, <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, bring it on. And I also decided not to go by my stage name anymore because I don't want to. You know, I don't feel Sarah Blake anymore. I'm Sarah Garlitz. And you know what? I love my name. My mom picked my name when she was 12. Like, I was manifested into life in a thought, and then I became a human. <laughs> Maybe that's why I feel older than I am, because when she thought of me and, you know, she said, I'm going to name my daughter Sarah Jane, and I was like, there I was. I was an idea formed, and then she gave birth, and there I was. <laughs> And I've always felt older than I am, so maybe that's why I have an old soul. Because I was thought of and then had to hang around until she got older <laughs> and met my dad. <laughs> now I'm just being silly. Okay. Now that I've blabbered on for 31 minutes, I'm going to go now. And uh, you got the full-on accent now. I'm not even hiding it. I don't even give a shit no more. I mean, I don't even care if you can understand me. Because you know what? I can speak Southern. I can speak it really fast. Or <laughs> speak with a southern accent very quickly. <sighs> still hyped. I'm still hyped. I like how uh, this is uh my life's exhausting. I tell you what. <laughs> it's no wonder I don't have any energy for like work and like putting together projects and different things. Cause man, I'm fucking burnt. I am exhausted. I am like dragon ass and like you know, henpecked to death where I got, like, you know, holes in me and whatever. I'm dragging my ass around. And, like, people are still trying to ask me for favors and shit. And I'm like, what? I got nothing. I got nothing for anybody right now. I wish I did. It makes me feel really shitty. I wish I could do all the things and help all the people. And, blah. And I, I can't. And I don't really have a good, like, handle on the brakes. <laughs> Because I'm still living in, unfortunately, I live in a lot of binary realities that I make for myself. It has to be this way or that way. And they're both extremes. And it sucks. And I'm trying to learn the balance of, like, multiple things at the same time. While remembering that I, like, have to do human things like shower and eat. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's difficult. So what I did, I decided to live and I researched the shit out of everything and I educated myself and I formulated plans and then I couldn't do the plans because I don't have the energy and then I made more plans and I couldn't do those plans and then ah, I, tr I tried to, I had myself believing if I could find the right combination of, you know, things to have like an okay day that I would have an okay day. But I omitted the fact that I have complex PTSD and it isn't unpredictable. Every day is unpredictable. Every hour is unpredictable. I never know when this shit is going to crop up and it's like being haunted. You don't have control when the spirits go, ooh, it ain't up to you. And apparently my brain's like the same thing. The fucker. <laughs> Randomly, like I, I build a sense of safety. Oh, now it's raining. I build a sense of safety, and my brain's like, oh, wow, we feel safe. It's safe to process more trauma. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> like, seriously. <sighs> well, if you're listening to this, thank you for listening to me, Babylon. Um, it's almost 35 minutes now, and I'm still kind of hyped, but I'm feeling better because I let some stuff out, so... I hope you take care of yourself. And if you got triggered by any of this, please take good care of yourself. If anything I say or write in my blog or any time you feel triggered, please take care of yourself. Get away from whatever it is that I'm putting out there. If it's bugging you, if it's like bringing up a batch of bad memories and making you feel bad, you know, take care of yourself. You know, reach out to your support system and, and 
do good things for yourself and, you know, be kind. Don't just power watch some things because it's me. If you're feeling hurt or triggered or whatever, like, don't do that to yourself. It's okay to put it away. <laughs> it's okay to walk away <laughs> from the computer and the news and the Twitter. You can walk away, take a break, breathe a little bit. Sometimes it's too much. It's like overwhelming. Anyway, all right. So I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, bye.